After climbing Dorian Tower in our last video, we headed due west through Manitoba and Saskatchewan to find ourselves in the beautiful Rockies of Alberta. Our names are Chico and Moritz, and we converted a box truck into a tiny home to travel across Canada to rock climb. Today we are beta testing our camera crane as it climbs its first route at Grassy Lakes. Make sure you stay till the very end to see what our box truck is capable of behind the scenes. Don't forget to like and subscribe to come along on our adventures. We had some pretty bad thunderstorm tonight and hardly slept, so let me see if I can wake up Chico. Normally I'm the one who wakes up early. No. Probably Chico's the one who wakes up early, but today... I can hear you. Oh my god, I slept like crap. I had like a really bad dream. So I was like dreaming that someone was going to kill me. And then I was like, nine! No, I said no in English. <laughs> and then I woke up. And the thunderstorm hit and it was just so loud. I never heard thunder that loud before. What are we doing today? I think we should still go climb because look it's so beautiful out right now. Let's go. I can't let you go baby. So we've had our tea and we've decided where we want to go climb for today. So now we gotta clean up and pack up the van and make sure everything is secure before we start driving off. There have been many instances where we've just started driving and things have started flying all over the place. Three more? Right. <laughs> okay. I gotta tell you that I if you recall in our van tour, we mentioned that the magnets for those straws didn't really help. We created these aluminium bars now that yeah, keep everything in place. They don't look pretty, but they work. Can I just take a moment also to comment on Moritz's facial hair? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying it out, guys. This is four weeks, is it? <laughs> I think so. I don't know. I don't know if I'm keen on it. No, maybe <laughs> tomorrow it goes. <laughs> the 
giant lake at the bottom and we are climbing at the two upper lakes and yeah, we are parked at the furthest. So there's always something new happening in van life. Looks like our little trip up the mountain shook out the back of our... Oh wow! Uh, Moritz? What? The whole block came out. Like how could it just shift out like that? Why not? So it's no longer on the screws then? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> you cranky about the pee jug, you're cranky about the counter. Everything. But mostly the weather. Smile! Well, you go pee, because you said you had to pee really hard. <laughs> With that exact look on my face? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I did say that, but um, <laughs> yeah, the weather the weather kind of sucks, but like yeah. it's changing. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. Like it's it's moving beyond us. Yeah, like the clouds are moving, so just we'll have food and then we'll walk out. Mm. Feeling better? No. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. We would really love to show you some good climbing footage, but filming climbing has a couple of challenges. First is the height, so if you're standing underneath somebody and filming up, you most likely only get butt shots. I mean, I think you may want to see something else. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah. If you don't want to have butt shots, you somehow need to bring the camera up to the climber. And in our Dorian Tower video, we used the drone for that and we had the comfort of a ledge that was a little bit further off so we could set up another camera on that ledge and we could get a really nice shot of our climb. In most cases, you don't have that luxury, like you cannot fly the drone because you're in a provincial park or a national park and they don't allow drone flying. Or secondly, Drones are really loud, so I don't want to annoy anybody on the climbing crag. And that's when I thought of this thing, which will be a camera crane. So it will be attached to the top and pull up the camera while I'm climbing. Now there's another difficulty. We are only two people, so nobody would really be able to operate the camera crane. And that's when I started investigating in some image detection so it would detect us in the camera frame and make sure we are always centered while we are moving up and down. Also leave in the comments below if you want a really deep dive like me a talking hat and I go like into code and into the mechanics and so on. The whole device is in this storage box that I got off at our Home Depot and consists of a NVIDIA Jetson Nano. It's a AI development board where you can program yeah, computer learning algorithms on it and the big benefit is it runs off a battery so it's not like you need to carry a whole computer around. You just have this tiny board and it gives you the computing juice to do image recognition. And the second piece that I have in here is obviously a camera. So I have a power bench with a battery in here and this is a Raspberry Pi Nano. And it sends the camera picture via Wi-Fi to the Jetson to process the image. And then the Jetson will create some control signals for the winch, which will finally pull the camera up and down. On top of the climb, I'll hook up this little pulley. It gets the winch cable up threads it through here and it comes down and that's where the camera is attached. On the underside we have a power regulator so the battery voltage gets converted down to the 5 volts for the NVIDIA Jetson. We got a little remote controller so I can actually control it from the rock if I need to. I get the winch up and down manually and start the image recognition and stop it. And we got the motor controller that runs the winch up and down and all that is controlled by the NVIDIA Jetson. 
And the last piece is a TFT touchscreen so I can see what's going on and use the software I written to run the winch and the image recognition. The program is all written in Python. This was my first experience like on a bigger scale with Python programming. I'm a Perl programmer by trade so it was interesting to see the differences. Um, but yeah, it's really straightforward. Python is very easy to learn. So I'm gonna start the program now. It needs a quick while to load and that is the interface. And the first piece will start the video, so it starts the video stream from the Raspberry Pi. It takes a short while because it also initializes the AI model. And as you can see, it already recognizes me as a person. There's two lines on here, an upper limit and a lower limit. So as long as the center of the person is within these limits, the winch doesn't do anything. And once the center goes below, the winch lowers the camera, and if it's above, it raises the camera. The winch is implemented with a proportional control, so it means the further away I am from my midpoint, the faster the winch will go, in both ways, obviously up and down. Today I'm really curious to see if it actually works on the rock. Of course you want to see the winch moving, so this pulls it down, or in this case because it's going up, it pulls it actually up, and the other direction is it pulls or lets the camera come down through the little pulley on top. And that's really all there is. In order to have the camera not like twist and like dangle back and forth, I have these guide ropes. They go all the way up to where our belay is on the top. And then we have the pulley that comes up from the winch and goes also to the camera. And then it will pull the camera up or down, depending where I am in this frame of the climb. So you see as the red crossbar that marks the middle of my body moves below these green marks, it moves the camera down. And of course, if I would jump up, <laughs> it would move it up. You ready to go climbing and test yeah, it out? Yeah, I'm, I'm super curious now if, if everything is working like it's doing in my test setup. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh. Are you hungry? Not anymore. Are you hangry? Maybe slightly. Why? <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons why we decided to take this year-long sabbatical to go rock climbing and building our camper van was so that we could try to climb 511s outdoors. And last year before the pandemic, we were doing so well. We were climbing like 510s outdoors and Morris was actually able to climb an 11. Not completely clean, but he was still able to muscle his way up there. And Oh, in Kentucky, I climbed the Yeah, actually oh. you did. So uh, that was our goal for this year, and we are really starting back at rock bottom. No pun intended. <laughs> um, we're going to do some easy stuff today just to get training, and we don't want to get injured early on in the season. Like, it's only June. As much as we want to rush ourselves to start taking things off and accomplishing things, it's really not worth the injury with the whole year ahead of us. So that's our big goal for this year. Going, we're supposed to get to the bottom. I think once we hit the first lake, we turn right and there should be this wall of very easy, lots of well bolted stuff, which is perfect for me because I'm a scaredy cat on the wall and it'll help calm my nerves knowing I can clip in every few feet instead of every 10 feet. 
Ooh, look at this. This is my kind of cut climbing. Okay, we're gonna get geared up. All right, so I have to go up first before I get too scared. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Hey guys, I'm just gangling here. I just finished the climb, but I wanted to share with you this view. Alright, get to lower. That was super fun. Are you Good. excited? Ah, well, it's gonna be a nice warm up. So, this is our camera gondola. This films my helmet and does some vision detection so it knows where my helmet is and this likely films me and this hooks into our guide rope and this rope pulls it up the rock. This really skinny guide rope that you can barely see up on the top and it goes all the way back down into here. So. Ready? There it is, 99% helmet. Yeah. <laughs> the black is blue, must be a helmet. It's coming fairly close, eh? <laughs> This is very close. <laughs> it works for like three meters. <laughs> then it gets way too close and if it's too far it doesn't recognize either. But I think if I would put like something like this on top to give it some distance. That would work actually really well and then we have a parallel one instead of this uh, sloped approach. Hello, hello. I am up on a 10A right now, relaxing because I'm all pumped out. But if you're curious how I'm so shaky right now, climbers actually climb rocks. We have these like awesome holds like this one. You can just wrap your whole hand around it and it's like a handle and I'm so sorry. My hands, my arms are all pumped out and just resting to finish off the climb. I don't know if you see there's a about, I want to say like, uh, maybe like six more meters left, five to six more meters left. So, Moritz is down below, holding onto the rope so I don't die. <laughs> Trying not to get all psyched out <laughs> pretty high up here. Look. Yeah, so usually during calving season, they would mark off that area of the wall. So I'm not sure why it's not marked off right now, um, but that was like a whole family of bighorn sheep, right? Yeah, yeah we're not climbing on that wall anytime soon. <laughs> these we're really tired, so we've got all this gear and stuff. We're just gonna head back to the van and we'll meet you there. To the treasure box. That hike back up is no joke. All right, we made it back. Let's make dinner.
healthy garlic and onions in with some oil and get the flavors going and then throw in the curry powder and stuff but honestly I'm so tired I just don't want anything to burn <laughs> so I am just gonna chuck it all in a pot in a way that the ingredients show up on this cutting block What an awesome day we had today. Climbing was awesome, weather was awesome, dinner was awesome. You got to finally use your camera crane and it was a pretty good success, I would say. Half the way up, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had so much fun at Grassy Lakes and we're so happy we got to take you guys along with us. I think it's about time for us to wind down now. It's been a really, really long day and we're completely pooped from climbing, not even that much. But uh, yeah, we're so happy to be able to share collecting these pitches with all of you. Yeah, I guess. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down there and we'll see you on the road to pitches. On the road to pitches. See ya. We were driving deep into the beautiful but remote Ghost River Crown lands when we came across two men in street clothes. They said they needed help because their Jeep was stuck and led us all the way down onto the bottom of the riverbed. Turns out they had driven their Jeep into the river, but thankfully we had extra climbing ropes and towing gear to pull them out. We're glad we were able to help them, but it's not an experience we'd like to repeat. But hey, at least now we know what we're capable of. Apple pie? Oh. Ta da!